All right, which Jeep is gonna get a little extra love today? Ah, nope, not you, baby, you're a wreck. What about you? Nope, gotta share you with another guy. Hmm, you know what? It's not you, it's me. Looking good, nah, you know what? I don't really even know you yet. Mm, sorry, you're a dude. Ah, uh, Black Beauty, wow. Take my breath away, every time. Mighty Fine XJ, absolutely. You and me, Black Beauty, there you go. Hey, you giving my candy to a Jeep? Nope, nope, nope. What's up guys, I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we're gonna give some extra special love to a very special Jeep. Got Black Beauty over here, we're gonna do a little work on her, some preventative maintenance. And I went around the yard, thinking of things to do, looking for a project for a Valentine's Day. Kinda felt like Kino from Turtles 2, looking for a girl to ride on a scooter. Hey ladies, which one of you lucky girls gets a ride with me tonight? Dream on, dweeb. <laughs> he crashed and burned, but he came up with a great comeback. Yeah, okay. But when I do, I'll dream of something a little thinner. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for me, it wasn't the case with Black Beauty. She openly accepted my invitation for a little love, a little extra time. So, so far, we took her to the car wash, baby. Take it through the car wash, baby, you know? Then we had her air dried. Oh, air dry that shit, yeah. yeah. Now she's looking real good, and she's ready for some work. So what I bought for Black Beauty today was, <laughs> thank you Grievous, thank you for chauffeuring Black Beauty's parts. <laughs> we got ourselves a Walmart Everstart battery, brand new, and we got ourselves a CarQuest starter, brand new, some terminal felts, and of course some dielectric grease for the terminals. And we're gonna put this in Black Beauty. Now, why do I need a battery and a starter? Let's check it out. Come on over to the Beauty. There we go. Here's some preventative maintenance. You know what? I should have picked the door checks. <laughs> Still haven't done that. But here we go. So I'm not really digging the sound of that starter. Sounds really weak when it turns over. Just sounds like it's struggling. And I've had this Jeep for about four years and I haven't touched the starter. And I think it's time to do some preventative maintenance. I don't want it to crap out on me when, uh, when well, it's 30 degrees somewhere at midnight and I got no one to get me home. So we're gonna do the starter now just to, uh, just to play it safe. And while we're at it, of course, we're gonna do a battery. Let's check out the battery. All right, guys, let's take a look under the hood. And right off the bat, you can see I got a Walmart Everstart Max battery right over here. And the date is 315. I've been using a six year old battery in this Jeep for a while, but I replaced the battery when I got this Jeep back in July of 2017. Now, the first battery I put in this thing was actually a yellow top Optima. And you can see that battery in this Jeep in my perfect XJ video. I have the Optima yellow top battery and just a few wiring mods. But of course, in typical Optima fashion, that battery showed signs of failure just over one year's time. And I brought it in and of course they replaced it with this one. Now this battery is 119. This should still be considered new, but even this battery showed signs of failure within one year's time. So I couldn't make good on a new battery more than once. It only comes with a lifetime warranty once. So when your new battery they give you fails, you're on the hook. And I didn't want to buy a new battery again. So of course I put in this 315 Walmart battery. It is kind of sad that a Walmart battery that's six years old has outlasted two new Optima batteries. Yes, two. So because of that, and because I had to blow up a red top battery,
I have officially been done with Optima. They're garbage. I'll never buy another Optima product. I'm just going to stick to Walmart Everstart. But, of course, it's six years old now. Batteries shouldn't last more than six years. Unless it's an old school Optima. Go figure. My how times have changed. But for now, we're sticking with Walmart. Stick to what works, right? All right, step one in replacing your starter is to remove the battery terminals. And ironically, it is also the same step one when you replace the battery. So we are gonna go ahead and do that first, very conveniently. Got to pop off these toolless terminals. They work very good, but they're kind of getting worn out. Um, yeah, they've seen better days. Maybe I'll replace these in another video. But uh, right now, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Gonna remove the tie downs, just 13 millimeter nuts. There we go. I mean, <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, except for when it's a battery and a starter. That's good preventative maintenance, so yeah. Write that down. Write that down. All right, out goes the six year old battery. All right, now we're gonna look down in here, just past the oil filter, and there you can see the starter. And that is looking pretty crusty, pretty corroded. So we're going to go underneath, underneath the passenger side, and we're going to go ahead and pop it out. All right, going to lay down this old welcome mat, keep me warm from the freezing cold driveway. And when you're working under a vehicle, eye protection is a must. All right, here we go. Underneath the vehicle on the passenger side, and here is your starter. It is held in place by two bolts. It's usually a 14 millimeter bolt down here and a 15 millimeter bolt up here. They are facing opposite directions. They just pop right out. Now, I believe this is the factory original Mopar starter. Wow, this lasted 100,000 miles. Still works, but it's kind of getting weak. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these bolts and take this baby down. All right. Starting with this 14 millimeter, and <laughs> starter bolts never give me any trouble, usually because oil <laughs> always leaks all over this thing, and these bolts never get a chance to really seize up. So yeah, I'm I'm hand threading these off right now, and uh, that's another reason why starters go. If you have a really leaky valve cover, um, chances are this starter is going to be coated with oil, and that can shorten the life of your starter. So. You're going to want a clean, leak-free XJ for maximum starter life. Luckily for me, this lasted 100,000 miles. And maybe it's because I changed all the seals. Rear main seal, valve cover seal, oil filter seal. What else? Oil pan seal. Yeah. Gross. All right, working on the 15 millimeter bolt now up top, and I'm really sorry if you guys can't see this. My phone, my camera, is literally taped to the control arm. There we go. Now when the two bolts are out, yeah, she just comes right down. I'm just gonna rest it right over here. On the control arm, we're gonna go up top. All right, if you guys could manage to pull the starter up over the oil filter, you'll have much easier access to these electrical connections and that will totally make the job of switching these over onto the new one much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, first thing I'm gonna try to do is disconnect this solenoid terminal connector. It's pretty funky. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to do my best to unlock it without breaking anything. Now, in the 2000 and 2001 models, I know they have this clip. Um, older models just might have a little screw and nut, so that might be easier than this. This is a disaster when it's covered in goop. I'll try to pop out this locking clip here. There we go. And then pull the button. There we go. Solenoid connector disconnected. Now I'm going to take off the power wire to the solenoid. Again, this powers up the solenoid, which triggers the starter motor. So, there we go. This should be a 13 millimeter or a one half inch. And this is out. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. That's nasty. 
All right, here is the original Jeep starter. Look at this. It's even got the model number and stamped with a serial number. Classy. Now we know this thing works, it's just running very weak, so we're going to replace it anyway, but if yours wasn't working and you wanted to test this, you could check the continuity between the solenoid and the starter motor. You could also check the continuity between the solenoid and the shell. So uh, we know this works and we're not going to mess with it, we're just going to replace it. So out with the old, and here, here is the new. Alright. We got ourselves a brand new car quest from Advance Auto, and this is uh, this is really nice looking. Now, I ordered a factory spec starter from Amazon. It was supposed to come yesterday, but unfortunately, they delayed it. They said it wasn't going to come till after this video was supposed to be posted, so I had to go out and buy this one. Now, the one on Amazon I ordered was $160, and I believe this was the exact same price. So we're in the same ballpark, and when the other one comes, I guess, well, I'll just have two. Maybe I'll return it. I don't know. Maybe one will fail out of the box. You never know after that crankshaft position sensor video. So here's a look at all the testing. This was done and everything passed. So I guess we'll go ahead and put it in. And here's some quick instructions. Here we go. Of course, turn off your key. You can put a memory saver on. Yeah, no thanks. Um, disconnect the battery, of course. Yeah, the worst part about changing the battery is always resetting your radio presets there we go guys nothing special gonna go ahead and put this core back in get my 33 dollars back from the store and we'll go ahead and put this in a vehicle all right all right got my new starter down in here just gonna rest this on the oil filter for a quick minute and Gotta quickly scrub up this connector. Don't want to get all the corrosion off, all the gunk and grime. Want good starter connections. Make this baby shiny. There we go. It's looking better. And of course, installation is gonna be the opposite of removal. So we'll take off the half inch nut. Gotta coat this baby with some dielectric grease. Slide on our power wire, put on the lock washer, and put on the nut. Hand thread this a little bit. There we go. Secured with the impact. Now I'm just going to add some more dielectric grease over both these terminals down here. It's going to cover the solenoid trying to keep the corrosion away so slather that baby up and some for the solenoid connector there we go a little blob for good measure and connect the solenoid connector there we go pushing the lock got it all right starter is connected now let's reinstall All right, back underneath the Jeep, and I tried to prop you guys on top so you could get a better better view of what's going on here. <laughs> the struggle is real when you're under a Jeep. I got my phone taped up once again to give you guys the best view possible. The struggle is real. There we go. She's sitting flush. Now let's put the bolts in. And of course, you're going to want to make sure you clean up the threads nice and good. It will help you be able to hand thread these things into place before you tighten them down. That is huge right there. Get these things in. Hand tight. Oh yeah. Let's see. Wiggle that into place. Uh, sorry. I need two hands. There we go, got the 15 millimeter at the top, it's nice and tight. Now we're gonna get the 14 millimeter at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. She ain't going nowhere. 
All right. <laughs> Come on. Starter is in. Give me that. All right. Starter is in. It is looking good. The hard part is out of the way. Well, maybe not hard, but we're going to put the battery in next. And before that, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean up all this crap. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. All right, I took this opportunity to look underneath the battery tray, and I wasn't really a fan of what I saw. There is some rust. We'll address that in the spring when it's warm enough to paint. So uh, <laughs> just going to go ahead and give it some WD-40. That'll, that'll hold it over for another couple months. So now we've got to put the battery tray bolts back in first. All right. Tray's good to go. Now it's time for the battery itself. Again, Walmart Everstart battery. This baby has got, there we go, 800 cold cranking amps and 985 cranking amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit warmer than it is now. So let's go ahead and pop her on. She ain't going nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. That's right. And here we go. Before we hook this all up, I just want to test this battery. Got this battery tester sent to me for free by some company. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and uh, test this out. See if this works. See if the battery has a full charge. All right. Check this out. We got a 100% healthy battery. This thing is really cool. I just set it to the type of battery. I selected its cold cranking amps, which is 800. There we go, it is good. So maybe I'll do a full review on this nifty little tester. That is, uh, that is awesome. So here we go, we're gonna plug this baby in and be finished with this project. All right, it is cold, it's beginning to precipitate and I wanna finish this before I get snowed on again. <laughs> Man, we've been taking a beating up here in the Northeast with this snow. It is not fun for Jeep projects, let me tell you. So here we go. First thing we're going to use on this install is some new battery felts. Now, these are supposedly soaked in an alkaline solution, which prohibits or hinders the formation of battery acid. So we're going to put on our felts, black on negative, red on positive, and of course... We're going to use some of this good stuff right here. We got, it's basically dielectric grease for batteries. Again, it's anti-corrosive gel. Let's actually read it. Yeah, prevents corrosion. There we go. Insulates battery posts, prevents corrosion, effective acid battery, which is what you want. So we're going to goop this on. This is kind of pinkish, clearish, whitish. I'm used to it being red, but whatever. Let's blob this on. Dielectric crap. <laughs> there we go. Drop down the negative. And we'll place it on the positive. All right. They are toolless terminals. But <laughs> nothing wrong with going ahead and using a little... Little adjustables right here. Crank this down. Don't want it to go anywhere. Especially, you know, a brand new battery. Don't want to embarrass the battery <laughs> with poorly connected terminals. All right. Positive. There we go. Make sure that's on. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and crank down these fasteners right here. Make sure the connections, oh, look at that. Make sure we have solid connections. There we go. Now, <laughs> this post is for my subwoofer, so <laughs> it's not the end of the world if that one's loose. 
All right, new battery is in, looking good. We got the new starter in, looking real good. Time for the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's test her out. Well, interior lights go on. That's a good sign. We got power. All right. Woo! Nice. All right, guys, the starter and battery is in. Black Beauty fires up real nice. She is definitely an excellent vehicle. Jeeps will treat you nice if you treat them nice. So show some love to your vehicles on Valentine's Day. Again, this baby is mine. So uh, that's a wrap, guys. It is, it is snowing, raining on me once again. I am freezing out here. Hope you guys appreciate that. Still trying to give you guys content even in the bad season. So for that, like, subscribe, share this video, and I will see you guys on the next project. Peace. You know what? Let me test the old battery, see what we had here. Battery test, enter. Lead acid, yes. Cold cranking amps, yes. This baby, this baby was actually 825 down 825 825 look at that <laughs> we were rocking an unhealthy battery well it was six years old <laughs>